Hey everyone, I'm Miss Emily and today we are going to cook. Now this is different from what I've done in the past. I've done a car maintenance video, I've done softball and basketball, um, but today we're going to come into the house and we're going to cook and we're going to cook a Michelin star meal. Now a Michelin star meal is just an award that a chef or a restaurant can get based on the food that they produce. Years and years and years ago, Michelin, the company, like the tire company, decided that they wanted to promote travel. They wanted to promote road tripping. And so one way that they thought they could really get the eye of their, of their customers was to go around the world to all of the restaurants and start to judge these restaurants based on their food. Now this judgment is based on a zero to three star scale. Now, if you have a zero star, you didn't do too well, but if you have a three star, you're doing really well. And these judges who are anonymous or meaning no one knew who they were or why they were there, uh, had the food and then judged it and they had uh, a criteria that they had to meet. So their criteria was one, quality, how good is the food? Number two, the mastery of technique. Whenever they present the food to the, to the, to the person, does it look pretty? Um, number three, the personality of the chef. Is the, is the chef kind of like Gordon Ramsay and kind of mean? Or are they personable? Are they coming out? Are they explaining what their meal is? Also, number four, they had the value of food. Is not only is the quality of the all around experience good, but is the value and the quality of the food itself good? And then finally, consistency. Is it good from beginning to end? Especially if they got a first, second, and third course. Now, we're going to use that criteria today and we are going to cook pork chops, with caramelized apples on a bed of puree de pomme de terre. Now, that's just a really fancy way of saying we're gonna have pork chops, apples, and mashed potatoes. But here's a couple of pro tips. One, if you wanna cook a really fancy meal, use all the butter you have in your house. I'm not even kidding. Number two pro tip, if you want it to be good, give it a French name. Um, lucky for me, I know a little bit of French, so it comes easy. Now, before we get started, before we actually get into the cooking and, and getting all of the things we need for the food, I want us to do a warm up. So our warm up is going to be a scavenger hunt. And in just a moment, you'll have a list of the items that I would like for you to find. Now these are necessary to use during our session. So when you see the list, go ahead and pause this video and find those 22 things that are on the list. A lot of times you can reuse, and I tried to condense the list down a little bit, um, but it's still a really long list. So go ahead, when you see the list, pause the video and then find those things on the scavenger hunt list. First step, slice your shallots or your onions and press your garlic. Then on medium heat, add half of the garlic and half of the onions to a medium saucepan. After your garlic and your shallots have started to brown, you can go ahead and add your apple cider. And you're gonna let this boil for about five minutes. While you're waiting for your sauce to cook, go ahead and peel and slice those apples and potatoes. This will cut down on some of your cook time. Now that your sauce has been boiling for about five minutes, add a chicken flavored bouillon cube. Make sure that it's completely melted and dissolved before you move to the next step. Your next step is going to be to remove those solid bits from your sauce. So you can use a sieve or a strainer for this. After you've done that, go ahead and you can dispose of those solid pieces in your, from your sauce and then return your sauce back into the pan that you cooked it in. 
At this point, you can go ahead and add cream and butter. And you wanna mix it up to make it a little bit thicker, but it's not going to be a very, very thick sauce. Once you've finished, you can cover it with a lid and set it to the side. So this next step is really, really tricky and can be really, really sensitive. You don't wanna burn your caramel. So what you'll need to do is add one cup of powdered sugar into a small saucepan and let it cook on low to medium heat. Technically, you're not supposed to stir it, but I find that it goes a little bit faster if you stir it. Once it begins to cook, it's going to turn a nice rich caramel color. When it's this color, you're gonna to know to add half a cup of apple cider to the caramel. Let your caramel cook for 45 seconds to one minute. Then go ahead and add your apples and your butter. You're gonna want your apples to cook for about eight minutes or until they're a tender and caramel color. Once they're finished, turn the heat low and set them to the side. To prepare your pork chops, you want to score them. This just means making tiny little cuts into your meat. Now you'll need to lightly season your pork chops using black pepper, thyme, and salt. Just like before, cook your garlic and your onion on high heat until they're brown. Once you add your pork chops to your pan, go ahead and turn your heat down to medium. That way the outside of your pork chop doesn't cook before the inside of your pork chop. Your pork chops will be ready when they are all white in the middle. In the beginning, I said your pork chop was going to be on a bed of puree de pommes de terre. Now, that's just the French way of saying that it's going to be on a pile of mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are fairly easy. All you're gonna have to do is take those peeled and sliced potatoes from earlier, put them in a large pan, cover them with water, and boil them until they're soft. And then you mash them. I added butter and whipping cream, and then they're done. The next task and the final task is to plate the food. Now plating just simply means making the food look pretty whenever you present it on the plate to whoever you're cooking it for. This is personally one of my favorite parts. So you get to use your creativity, you can do designs and you can do colors and you can just sort of create it and make it however you would like. Now that you've finished, it probably has taken about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, maybe an hour and 30, just depending on how long it took that sugar to caramelize. Um, that can be sort of sensitive and tricky, so be careful with that. Um, before we end our session, I just wanna ask a few reflection questions. So one I would like to ask, um, what did you think? What did you think about cooking a gourmet style meal? A meal that technically has earned some Michelin star um, awards. The next thing I would like to ask is, um, how would you improve the meal? Would you take things away? Would you add something to it? Um, 
If you didn't like the apples, maybe would you substitute that with pear? If you don't like pork or you don't eat pork, maybe you would substitute that with chicken or even beef would be good. Um, so what would you improve uh, or how would you improve the meal to make it better? And then finally, my last reflection is, if you do have any other ideas for um, gourmet style dinners or gourmet style dishes, um, it would be cool to hear from that. So leave comments or you know let us know somehow and I will do my best to try to make those for you. Um, in the meantime, guys, I hope you are healthy and safe and I hope you enjoy cooking your Michelin star meal. I hope other people are really impressed with your work. Um, guys, have a great week. See you next time.